Nuclear fission and fusion is only in the GCSE physics, so you don't need to know this for combined science. Fission is the splitting of large nuclei to small nuclei, and fusion is the joining of small nuclei into larger ones. Now fission is currently used on Earth in nuclear reactors. Fission uses isotopes and it also creates waste products that have very long half-lives. So there's serious risks attached to doing nuclear fission on Earth. Fusion is currently only used on Earth for weapons. However, it is the main reaction by which stars release their energy. And it has been used for spacecraft propulsion. But it's currently not possible on Earth to do a fusion reactor which gives you a net gain of energy. So nuclear fusion is not currently viable for making a power station. But the good thing about nuclear fusion is it leaves no radioactive waste. I just want to remind you to be really careful about your spelling of fission and fusion because the two words are so close to each other that one letter out of place can make it look like one of the other ones. So this is one time you will be marked wrong if you spell them wrong. You need to know quite a lot of detail about nuclear fission. So nuclear fission is when a more massive and unstable nuclei split to form a less massive and more stable nuclei. And in doing so energy is released. Spontaneous fission is quite rare. Fission is induced when a fissile nucleus absorbs a neutron. It becomes very unstable and undergoes fission, that's that splitting. It releases two or three neutrons when it does fission, and it also releases a lot of gamma radiation. The neutrons go on to cause more fissions, and this is what we mean by a chain reaction. Each fission causes more fissions, and that happens exponentially. So because it releases two or three, each fission goes on to start two or three other fissions. So very quickly, you have this multiplication of one fission causing two, causing four, causing eight, causing 16 and so on and very quickly you get a lot of fission happening. We can control that chain reaction by actually capturing those neutrons. So we use what's called control rods in a power station to actually absorb the neutrons and stop them going on to cause more fissions. In a nuclear weapon we don't control the chain reaction, we just allow the chain reaction to occur at very high rates and that gives out a lot of energy very quickly and that's an explosion. If you think about what's happening in terms of energy stores to link this right back to unit 1, then what's happening is the nuclear store of the reactants is actually decreasing and the kinetic store of the products is increasing. So the products gain a lot of kinetic energy and that is what causes all the damage in let's say a nuclear bomb or that's what heats the water in a reactor. I just want to say something about this diagram here. Be really, really careful to memorize this type of diagram accurately because you are expected to be able to either draw or interpret or complete a diagram that looks like this. This is the fissile nucleus. It's absorbing one neutron. It's splitting into these daughter nuclei and then it's releasing two or sometimes three neutrons. Each of those neutrons goes on to be absorbed by another fissile nucleus, which does fission and releases two or three neutrons and so on. It's important to memorize the diagrams in GCSE physics accurately. Nuclear fusion is where two less massive nuclei fuse to create a more massive nuclei. So in this diagram we have tritium and deuterium, which is two isotopes of hydrogen combining to make helium, and it releases a high-speed neutron. Now you don't need to draw a diagram of this process, but they can sometimes help you understand it and memorize what's going on. The diagram actually describes fusion of two isotopes of hydrogen and they're combining to make helium and a lot of radiation is given out in the process. A lot of energy in the form of gamma radiation is given out in the process. The neutron has a lot of kinetic energy, which makes a fission explosion particularly devastating, particularly damaging. You wouldn't be asked to write this, but you could be asked to interpret this type of an equation. This just actually describes that process in a nuclear equation. One hydrogen, which is deuterium, it's a hydrogen isotope with an extra neutron. It's a mass of two, deuterium, is combining with hydrogen three or tritium. So it's hydrogen, one proton and two neutrons. And that makes helium, which is a particularly stable isotope and gives out one neutron. There's one bit of information that's particularly important to understand about fusion, which is particularly important later when you come to understand nuclear fusion in stars. It takes a lot of kinetic energy to bring together the two isotopes of hydrogen because they have a lot of electrostatic repulsion from each other because they're both positive nuclei. So you have to get really high temperature and pressure to allow nuclear fusion to occur. Once nuclear fusion has started, then it makes its own energy to actually force the other hydrogens together to undergo fusion. To just get it started, you need to get that gas, get that hydrogen up to a very high temperature and pressure to force the hydrogens to be close enough to do nuclear fusion. 
And that's why it's currently not really possible to get a net gain of energy from nuclear fusion on Earth, because we need to put so much energy in to get it up to the temperature and pressure. And we need to be able to contain that plasma, which is a gas at a very high temperature and pressure. And that takes a lot of energy as well, because we have to use electric and magnetic fields to actually contain that plasma because it will just melt whatever we put it in it will melt any metal container that we put it in so we haven't solved the problem with nuclear fusion yet but it probably will go on to solve a lot of earth's energy problems you need to know that some mass is converted into energy in the process in all nuclear reactions there's some mass which is lost to energy some mass becomes energy and that's what's meant by Einstein's famous equation E equals mc squared you don't need to use it but it's a nice thing to know where it comes from it's the equation by which we can calculate the size of a nuclear store of energy it's when mass is actually turned into energy Mass is not always conserved in nuclear reactions, although it is in chemical reactions. It's not in nuclear reactions because it is turned into energy. And that's why nuclear reactions have such high energies.